All right, everyone, good morning. This is our literal first wellness workshop, and I am so excited. We're going to have a lot going on over the next about 60 minutes or so, and I'm just, I really want to welcome you. My name is Ashley Howard. I'm going to introduce the other ladies that are going to help me host this wellness workshop, and I just wanted to say that we're really, really glad that you're here. So some of you might be coaches with us. You know, we're a part of a coaching organization where we help people get back to the root of their health and we are on our own journey and we pay that forward. Some of you might be clients of ours. I know for me, I've got a 21 day accountability group that's starting on Monday. So some of you guys are like, that's me. I'm here. This is our kickoff to our really healthy August ahead. And some of you might not be involved with anything and you just saw this workshop and wanted to hop on. So either way, just want to take a moment and really congratulate you for being here. You know, you guys, wellness is really not just physical. In fact, I think the mental and emotional side of wellness is so much more important. So what we're going to do this morning is just really wanted to welcome everyone and we're going to spend some time on our own wellness. I'm also going to quickly introduce the other three ladies that are going to have a piece in hosting this call with me. And two of them are my coaches and one of them is an amazing energy coach that I have been working with. So Amanda Trader in just a few minutes is going to take us through a delicious recipe. She is one of the best cooks out there. So stay tuned. It's really yummy. We have Tessa Brown, who's going to be sharing a really transformational story that she has gone through over the last several years. And we're going to end this call with a guided meditation from Cheyenne Hawks, who has Heart of Wellness as her company. And I've been working directly with Cheyenne the last couple months, amazingly transformational. So whether you've ever meditated or not, stick around. That's like the icing on the cake to close out this amazing hour together. And I just wanted to thank these women for helping me put this on. This is my first time ever doing a true wellness workshop, and I'm really, really excited. So I just wanted to open with a breath together. Some of you, if you're on my coach team, you know that I love this. So wherever you are, just want you to roll your shoulders back once or twice. It might be early. You might be in California and it might be 6 a.m. Thank you for being here. All right. When you roll the shoulders back, I want you to go ahead and bring some energy into your hands. So just rub those hands together, creating heat. And then I like to shake it out. I picture that energy just literally going out to this call to you all where you are at your homes. And then go ahead and just bring your hands to your heart, one over the other. And don't worry, no one can see you because we're all going to close our eyes, but go ahead and close your eyes and just let your breath out. Now through your nose, take a really big inhale, eyes closed. And through the nose, take a long exhale. We'll do that one more time together. Take a deep breath in through the nose. And a long breath out through the nose. Open your eyes. What's really cool about just wellness and energy in general is we can feel something even being together virtually, right? So I'm looking at all of you. I'm so excited that you're here and just know that this workshop is going to be what you get out of it. It's going to be what you're open to doing, to digging a little deeper, and we're going to jump right in. Are you guys ready? Are you excited? Can you share where you're zooming in from in the chat? I always love to see if we have like all of the country or maybe another country represented. Drop where you're zooming in from. And as you do that, I'm going to share a little story with you. I like to see where I'm going to try not to be too distracted by the chat, but I love seeing where people call in from. So <clears throat> my name is Ashley Howard. I have been a business owner for nine years. My business is in health and wellness coaching. I had a background in group exercise. I've always loved health and fitness, but I want to share something with you guys that was really um, transformational for me. So I always focused on the physical aspects right? The workout, just, you know, put your body through challenges. And then when I started my business really officially in 2014, I got really driven. I was just one of those people that was like, get out of my way. I'm tired of how my life is. I'm going to change. And I saw my business as an opportunity to earn a lot of money. That's what I saw it as. And to do that, I just had to work harder and harder and harder. And that worked to a certain extent. I was fortunately able to build my business to the point where I could leave my part-time jobs. I didn't have to go back to a cubicle where I was miserable. I started making money at this. And that was really cool because my business was rooted in health and wellness, right? And that was awesome until it wasn't. 
until a certain point that I just tried to hustle and work and work and work. And I forgot about the heart. I forgot about taking care of myself. That was very much more about physical and tangible things and a whole lot less about how do you actually feel? And some of you guys might know my story. I'm not going to go deeply into it, but in 2015, I had tragedy strike my immediately fam my immediate family, not once, but twice within eight months. And it rocked my entire world. My heart was broken open. And I let a lot of people in as I was dealing with those tragedies and trauma. And then somewhere around 2016, looking back, I could see that my heart completely closed up. I was more emotionally unavailable to everyone. The only person that knew even a little bit of me was my own husband. And I felt going forward, if I could just work and hustle and work and work and just stay focused and stay focused, I would be okay. But I wasn't okay. And so over the next several years, I really tried to out hustle, not healing myself. And it really wasn't until about a year ago that I realized that mentality was getting me nowhere. I felt like the more emotionally disconnected I could be from people, the more I protected myself. And really the whole point of being here on this earth that I have really realized, especially in the last 12 months, is I was missing the connection piece that brought me joy and contentment in the first place. I was so worried about the tangible success that I was having that it really wasn't fulfilling me at all because I had no emotional attachment to it. I saw people rather as people that could help me rather than friends and relationships that I could develop. And so when I started literally transforming specifically over the last couple of months, you guys, I'm brand new to this. So send me a lot of love because this is hard for me to share. Realizing that at our core, we just want to feel connected. We just want to feel seen. We just want to feel loved. And you might be sitting here thinking, what the heck does that have to do? I'm your client. I joined you to work out. You join me that you, so you could prioritize your self-care and your wellness and go share that with yourself and your family. And for me, that was the journey of coming back to myself. So the last piece of the story that I wanted to share is I have been working with my coach, Cheyenne, and one of the first assignments that she gave me was journaling. And I kind of rolled my eyes at journaling. I've, I've done little bullet journals, but it's hard for me to journal on a regular basis. One of the first things that I did was write a letter to my daughter. I might give it to her. I'm sure I will at some point when she's older about her values and respecting herself and her body. And I will tell you just that assignment because I'd realized what had happened when I was a child that things that weren't said to me and things that weren't shared with me and where places where I didn't feel supported, that journal was really transforming for me because I realized like I got the physical, I know how to work hard. I can build a business. I can help people, but now I'm working on the emotional side of things. That's going to affect my children and my husband and most importantly, myself. So I share that because we are going to journal a little bit in just a couple minutes, but that's my story, you guys. And I just wanted to share that I feel like I have the secret and I want to share it with you guys because it's about really taking care of you. And it's actually not about the tangible stuff. It's about the journey back to our heart. And it's about taking someone and looking someone in the eye and saying, I see you. I appreciate you. You're worth it. And yeah, that's tied to taking care of your body and your mind physically, but it's most importantly about taking care of yourself and really the, the journey back to your heart. So all that to say, we're going to move on to our next, um, our next little journal prompt is going to be our three minute prompt for you to have some space to journal. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set, I'm going to give you guys a prompt and I'm going to set my timer for a couple minutes and the check in and see how you're doing. I'm going to put some really calm music on and we're going to do this first journal prompt. Does that sound good? Are we ready? We have our pens. Okay. Here's your prompt. It's very simple. You're going to write down three things that you love about yourself and one thing that you want to improve on. Okay. I will type that in the chat. So you have a reminder. I'm going to stay unmuted and turn my music on and we have three minutes. All right. The timer starts now. Three things you love about yourself and one thing that you want to improve.
How are we doing with that? We've got 30 seconds to wrap up. Okay. And also, if you guys can, please turn your videos on. I don't care if you look like you just rolled out of bed. I would love, love, love to see your faces. And as we're wrapping up this journal prompt, type in the chat. I know it might be scary, but I promise you it's really actually empowering. Would anyone like to share their three things they love and one thing they improved? I can't see everyone. So if you'd like to share, just type in the chat. No worries, Brady. It's real life here. Okay. All right. I will share mine. Oh, awesome. Okay. Oh, I love it. Just type it in. Yeah, let's do that. Samantha loves her heart, her faith, and her patience. She wants to improve her leadership. Samantha, Sandy, my loyalty to those around me, my compassion for others, stay committed to my goals and not doubt myself so much. I know a lot we can relate. Gina, generosity with friends, goofy, smart, creative, improve longevity related fitness. Love that. Ashley, good mother, ability to exercise, move her body. Love that she's always there for people. That's awesome, Ashley. I don't want to, I love reading it. I, don't, I might not read all, but guys, these are so great. April, the question was three things you love about yourself and one thing too you would like to improve. Heart for others, independence and faith. Keep these coming. I'll, I love all of these. I'll, I'll finish with reading mine, uh, my work ethic. I want to do my best work in anything that I do. I love my ability to visualize. I've had a vision since 2012 and Facebook reminds me when I used to say these big goals and had no idea how I would make them happen, but I made them happen with every step of the way and my consistency and my reliability. I want to improve continuing to open up to others and being vulnerable and my patience because I'm not a very patient person. All right. Keep these coming in. You guys, I'm going to go read them. We're going to move the call forward with my dear friend and coach, Amanda Trader. If you don't know Amanda, she is a coach with me. She also has a baking business and I just want to come to her house sometimes because if I lived closer, I'd be over for dinner every day. She's an amazing cook. So she is going to be in her kitchen, walking us through a quick superfood fruit dip recipe. And Amanda, you take it away. I see you there in your kitchen. You should be able to unmute. Hi guys, good morning. Um, I'm so excited to see everybody. I'm super uber nervous to talk to this many people live. So send me all the love to help my, my nervous energy flow. But um, I had a couple, I loved, I loved to bake. I love to cook. Um, do I feel like I'm the greatest at it? Absolutely not, but we're always our toughest critic, right? So I have fallen in love with this new fruit dip and my kids love it. And if your kids are like my kids, they hate veggies. So I try to sneak veggies into absolutely everything that I make for them. So when I found this recipe, or it was shared with me through Beachbody, I was like, I can totally add some veggies to that and nobody will know. So I'm going to kind of hopefully angle my camera down. Oh, good. You guys can see. So really all you need is chocolate superfoods, a cup of frozen spinach. And here's a tip for you. If you do not have a big tub of frozen spinach in your freezer, do that now because then you always have it and there's no excuses to not be able to throw some veggies into whatever you're making. You will not be able to taste this. You need a tablespoon of natural peanut butter and a cup of whatever fruit your kids love. We love strawberries. We have them. That's what we use. Last week we used apples. Works great with everything. And a half Half, yes, half cup of cold water. So super quick, all you do is add your water first so it mixes really well. I like to use my little food processor and then toss in your frozen spinach. Mine's kind of becoming non-frozen now that it's been sitting here waiting for y'all. And then just one scoop of the chocolate superfoods. And this is getting us our, of course, our vitamins for the day too. My kids aren't gonna take any pill or gummy so they, they get their vitamins this way. And then your tablespoon of peanut butter. Top on your lid, quick, quick little blend. You're done. I did this like, you know, real chef style. 
Not that I have a clue what I'm doing, but I whipped some up before the call. This stuff is to die for. It's dippable, spreadable, put it on whatever and enjoy it. That's a breakfast. I hope you guys try it and love it as much as I do. Thanks for letting me share, Ash. Oh my gosh, you're so welcome. Thank, let's give Amanda some love in the chat. Thank you, thank you. And we will get you guys the recipe, okay? So Amanda, if you can send me the recipe after this call for your superfood dip, I'll pass it along to everyone who attended, okay? Yum, I feel like I'm so boring with my uh, with getting my nutrients in and I see Amanda. She also made, um, I think you made pancakes one time that looked really, really good. So I have to really reiterate that you guys, biggest tip, what Amanda said, frozen veggies. I add frozen cauliflower. I add frozen spinach. When you blend up something about it being frozen, I think it really blends well with whatever you're blending. So you can literally get like a, a extra serving of vegetables. And if you have young kids, they can't taste it. Just give it to them. All right, let's, let's move on. Amanda, thank you so much. That was awesome. Um, I'm really excited about this next piece of our workshop. My good friend, Tessa, if you know Tessa, you know that she's had this, this insane physical transformation, right? She went from very, you know, skinny and uh, to just completely fit and strong. Um, but I, I wanted her to talk not about the physical and she's also had a baby. So her whole progress of pregnancy versus postpartum, like it's just incredible. So I will let that speak for themselves. She can share her story physically, but I wanted her to talk about this transformation that she had, um, really mentally and emotionally over the last couple of years and really about her journey of self-worth and getting back to truly loving herself. Cause I think that's something that I know I struggle with. And I think it's been so inspiring to see her. So I'm going to turn the time over to Tessa Brown. Please give her some love in the chat and she will share her story. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm going to just preface this by saying my daughter did just wake up. So I'm sure she will join us in just a second. Um, but it's always fun when Finn comes on the calls. Um, hi, my name is Tessa. If you don't know me, I've been on my journey for about five years now. Um, when I started out, I uh, was, I'm still am an engineer, but I was working as a chemical engineer 12 hour days. And I, worked with only men. I started out, um, we, we just ate everything. Okay. So I was at a point where I just really didn't like what I was seeing in the mirror. I, um, working with all men is very difficult. And I think I went into the field, uh, not fully prepared for what I was going to have to experience, um, in the field. And I was pretty much shoved down. I didn't, I wasn't able to stand up for myself. I just kind of kept my head down, went along with everything. And um, that's where I was. And I started my, my physical journey with Ashley five years ago. Um, and I had started because looking in the mirror, I hated what I was seeing. I had no nothing to do with like nutrition. I literally just ate what I could find mostly was takeout and um, fast food because I was living two hours away from my husband, we'd only been married about three months and we had to separate because of a project I was on. Um, and he is the chef in our family. So I just, after working 12 hour days, would come home and either um, my neighbor would feed me because his wife was amazing, or I would pick up fast food on my way home because I didn't have time or didn't want to go to the grocery store and cook. So that's kind of where I started my journey. And it started with a physical journey. Um, I started working out. I started with um, our company and needed the workouts because they were 30 minutes. And when you're working 12 hours without, that doesn't include the commute time. You really just didn't have much time. And I knew that starting there was what would work for me. So I started working on my physical journey and my nutrition. Um, and over the five years, so much change. Um, I ended up joining the company and working and being a coach. And with that came a lot of personal development, which I <clears throat> kind of put my nose up to when I first started uh, this business. And I was like, I don't need personal development and to read that. I, I'm just fine. Um, and I quickly realized that I was very, very wrong. And I noticed that I was wrong because the more I read personal development and the more I focused on my mental health and things other than my physical health, um, I could see changes and growth in myself completely. Um, I learned, I gained confidence um, that 
went into my business, my engineering business. I ended up getting a new job that I liked more than the one I had started on my journey on and had um, a position where people actually like looked up to me. And that was the first time I wasn't like being torn down and like overlooked, I guess. Um, and I truly believe that I got that position and I applied for that position because of my mental growth that I had had. Um, before that, I didn't believe that I could have a position like that. Um, so I was in that position for a while and the, the company went bankrupt, so I lost it. Um, but I continued my physical and my mental journey throughout the entire thing and had a baby also in the midst of that. Um, struggled with postpartum anxiety with her and um, kept going basically. And I ended up in a job after I had my daughter that I absolutely hated. Um, and my whole life, I thought you had to go, um, you know, high school, graduate high school, go to college, get a career, find, uh, get married, have a family, continue your career, no matter what it was. And so that was kind of my mentality that I went into. But because of working on myself and my growth, I got the courage to not only stand up for myself at jobs, um, but I also started um, really truly loving myself and realizing that I don't need to be in something that I'm miserable in. And I just thought like, that's what you had to do. You had to just stick with whatever you chose when you were in high school. Um, and I was miserable and I knew what I wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to be home with my daughter. And I owe everything to working on myself and my me mental health to having the um, strength to decide that I wanted to walk away from this job and this career that I, my entire life thought that I had to do for until I retired. Um, and so that's what I did. I just made a decision that, you know, this is not worth it. You're not supposed to be miserable. And I don't believe that I would ever have come to that decision if I hadn't worked on myself, if I hadn't gained the confidence, if I hadn't um, learned to love myself I wouldn't have respected myself enough before to make that decision. Um, and it was the best decision I ever made because um, when COVID hit, I ended up losing that job that I was miserable at. And now I've been home with my daughter for two plus years. So, um, but without that, without the confidence I gained and being able to stand up for myself and um, being able to take that risk, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, and I started this journey hating what I looked like in the mirror, focusing on what the scale was. If the scale was not the number that I wanted to be, um, I honestly would skip a meal the next day, or I would be like, oh, I'll just eat five salads today instead of <laughs> what I had planned to eat. Um, I really had a very unhealthy relationship with that scale. And over the last five years, like Ashley said, I've had, I started out as like what people would call skinny, but I was an unhealthy skinny, if that even makes sense. I was just not, I don't want to say lucky, but I was skinny where I hated what I looked like in the mirror. Um, and I was eating crap. And from that first day picture, and I wish I had sent you Ashley, so you could pull it up from that first day picture of my journey. Um, I had my pregnancy. And then after that, I'm 15 pounds heavier now than I was when I started, um, my physical journey and I am happier, healthier, and way more in love with myself, which sounds really crazy. Um, and then I was when I started this journey and it all was because of my mental health. Um, if I hadn't worked on my mental health, I wouldn't be able to look in the mirror and be like, damn girl, you look good today. <laughs> um, and I don't focus on the scale anymore. And so that is huge, but y'all, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for personal development and focusing on that mental health and gaining the confidence and the self-love that I did over the five years. You send her some love in the chat. That's amazing. <clears throat> like joking. That's amazing because that's what this is about. This is about your wellness. This is not about a number on a scale. Like if you're with us, you probably know us because we work out, right? And we focus on nutrition, but that's pieces of it. You just talked about the journey back to yourself where you look in the mirror at 15 pounds heavier strength, mental strength, physical strength, loving yourself enough to take care of your body. Like, that's amazing. And that's what this is all about. And I think who can relate to like being, beating ourselves up. Can we see some hands or anyone in the chat? Have, have you looked in the mirror and like said words that you would never say to your children or your best friend or your husband, but we say it to ourselves. 
I can relate to that. Right. And, and what Tessa is like, she's speaking so much from her heart because I got to have a front row seat to that transformation. And I saw someone that was driven and just like, I'm just going to do this. This is my plan. This is what's happening. This is life. I'm a chemical engineer. I'm going to do all this. And then something shifted over the years where it, she just started listening to what she wanted in life. And she started caring more about how she felt. And she started leaning into her struggles to, to gain strength. And I have just seen this person that's become a great friend of mine blossom. And yeah, she looks amazing. But what I see is like, I see the smile back in her eyes. I see the glow back in her eyes. I see someone who just is her biggest fan. And could you imagine the ripple, this wellness workshop I titled, by the way, creating a ripple, because could you, can you imagine for a second, her daughter what the legacy that she's giving her daughter through prioritizing her health mentally and physically. She's also inspired her husband who's gotten an insane shape, by the way, like she has literally changed a family and what someone in our network says, and I always remember it, when you change a mama, you change a family, right? And whether you're married or not, or have children or not, your family is who is in your circle. And when you prioritize accountability to your health and your wellness, look at what can happen. Oh, Tessa, I have so many chills. I just have one question and um, <clears throat> I'm going to share my morning routine next, but you said personal growth and you kind of like turned up your nose at it. Did you, and we didn't go over this, so I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but if you had one book that you thought really made a difference in your life, do you have one that you could share with us? I have two actually, because they're the two that I always go back to and they are the compound effect um, and girl on fire. Um, those are my two books, girl on fire I don't think you can get the audible or anything for it. You had to have the physical book um, because there's like little prompts and stuff that you have to write in in there. Um, but those are the two books that I really loved. And I did want to shout out my husband because he's lost 60 pounds since he started his journey three years ago. 60 pounds. I can't, he looks like a different person if you've known him and you've seen him. Okay, I, that's amazing. Could you drop those two books and authors in the chat when we're, yeah. okay. Um, is there anything else you want to share before we move on? This was, amazing. no, I was going to see if you could see this picture, but I don't know if you'll be able to see. I can see it. Can you guys see it? So this was I, when I started my journey on the pink and then when I was pregnant and then now, so. Awesome. <clears throat> oh, I love hearing your story. All right, you guys, let's, I don't know how I can follow that, but I'm going to try, but thank you, Tessa, for sharing. I think that's, I think that's the secret. I think maybe you join, you want to make a change in your, in your life physically. It's like you come for a workout or you come for this workshop and you stay for, maybe you catch a glimmer of hope. Maybe, you know, you finally, something clicks where, you know, like just because that's how life has been, doesn't mean that's how life is going to be. And I saw someone in the chat say, this is my downfall. I talked to myself negatively in the mirror. And I would just say, what if today you added in something kind? What if today, instead of saying, Ugh, or looking in the mirror and looking at everything that you haven't achieved yet, what if you looked in the mirror and said, you know what, you have gotten me to this day in my life. Thank you. Because your body and your mind and your spirit is here. And it's gotten you through your hardest day. You have literally survived your hardest day. Doesn't that, isn't that worth some credit? So awesome. Okay. Thank you for sharing that, Tessa. We're going to move forward. Um, oh, thank you, Sarah, for sharing that. We're going to move forward with uh, my self-care tips. And then we're going to, we're almost through. And then we're going to complete with Cheyenne and our guided meditation. How are we feeling, you guys? I want to do a little check-in. Is everyone, how are you feeling in the chat? Is this cool? Do you like this? Are you liking our, our first ever wellness workshop? It's refreshing. I love that. I love that. What a way to start a Saturday morning, right? You guys are making me super excited. Like I feel very, very inspired. When someone says something that makes me inspired, I get a tingle in my thighs and I've already had like four thigh tingles. So I know something is happening. Oh, I love this. I love this. I hope I said your name right. Milana. That's awesome. Yeah. I feel it too. I love when I look around, I see people smiling or just like you guys are tuned in. Sometimes when I have a, a call, like people are doing a million things and I get that, but like, I feel like everyone's really here. And we're going to respect your time. So I'm going to move this along. Um, I'm going to, okay. This is also where you might want to have your notebook handy because I'm just going to throw things at you, L not literally, but I'm going to walk you through my favorite self-care tips. So it's going to be like from physically to my morning routine. 
And maybe I'm not saying go implement. This is my journey and my routine that I've developed over the months and years, but maybe you take one thing and you go with it and you try it out and you see how it works in your life. So my self-care tips, I'm really just going to get started with, I, I brain dumped everything that I do. Um, <clears throat> coconut oil pulling. So that might sound crazy, but I do, um, organic coconut oil. And I take a spoonful and this is where everyone thinks it's crazy. Um, I swish like swish in your mouth, like for 15 minutes, most days of the week. Now we are traveling. I'm at my in-laws. I feel naked without my coconut oil. I might have to go buy some, but I have noticed over time that it's actually like an ancient practice. I do it very, very consistently. I have noticed whiter teeth. I have noticed just fresher breath. I have noticed, I actually get comments sometimes on my teeth and I'm like, it's coconut oil. So coconut oil pulling, whether you've heard of it or not, that is part of my daily routine. And here's the thing. You might think, how can I do 15 minutes when I don't want to answer my daughter's question? She's five. I'm like, mm, I can't, I can't talk to you right now. I've got my coconut oil in, or you can do it in the shower, but sometimes that's hard to breathe. If you try to breathe in through your nose, um, I highly recommend it. My tips with coconut oil pulling, get a good quality coconut oil, one spoonful and spit it either in the toilet or outside. Don't spit it in your sink. It could clog your sink and then brush your teeth after you finish coconut oil pulling. Okay. So if you've never heard of that, or maybe you have, maybe you'll try it. And then some people have said the taste, it turns to liquid pretty quickly. It doesn't bother me, but I have been doing it for probably five years now and I really enjoy it. So that's my teeth self-care tip. Of course, also brush your teeth and floss. If you guys know me, like my team knows I am obsessed with uh, oral care. I love brushing my teeth and actually that along, I actually have it right out here. I might grab it if anyone wants to see it. I have a tongue scraper. So I got it on Amazon and it's this little like U-shaped thing. And you just scrape your tongue after you brush your teeth. That helps my breath feel so good. I feel fresh. I'm ready to go. So if you don't have a tongue scraper, I highly recommend one as well. Um, okay. I want to move into skincare. I'm not here to promote any product. I'm not even going to tell you what I use. If you want to know, you can ask me after this call, but I just want to encourage you to have a skincare routine. I was someone who just, you know, washed my face and that was it. And then about a year ago, I really started getting intentional about my skincare. So I found a quality company. Um, I do a three-step process in the morning and the evening. I used to never wash my face in the morning. I use a hyaluronic acid. I use a day cream and a night cream. And for me, just you know, I'm 34 and I feel like my skin looks better now than it did at 24. And obviously wellness and nutrition has so much to do with our skin, but I would highly encourage you to, to look into your skincare routine. Um, I don't know about you, but I actually really love having a skincare routine. It makes me feel fresh and ready to go. And I actually wear less makeup when my skin just feels like it's glowing. Okay. So look at your skincare, take care of yourself, take care of your skin. Our, our body is our skin. Um, the next tip I have is and if anyone wants to drop any questions in the chat, I will look at them after, but boundaries and social media. My business is actually on social media. So I have to be very careful of where I spend my time. Um, I literally just the other day, which I never do, I, I stumbled across someone's Instagram and I started scrolling her stuff. And immediately I'm like, look at all her followers, look at all of her likes. What am I doing wrong? Look at this influence she has. And in 10 seconds, I was in a negative space. And so I imagine if I have boundaries, how much could that affect us day to day? Um, and so what I want to share about that is whether you're on social media just for fun or for business, have boundaries. I don't have any notifications pop up on my phone except for text messages. So I don't see if I get a Facebook notification or an Instagram DM unless I actually open the app. And at nighttime, I'm not scrolling to relax. I'm looking at like funny things that I can scroll online or I'm just watching a show with my husband. I am not using to someone else's social media life as my entertainment to unwind. Because I have found when I do that, it's not relaxing to me. It's comparison and feels really bad. So I've really set boundaries. I think I actually really like social media. I've been able to build meet amazing people that have become some of my best friends and build a business. And that has been amazing. I actually think social media can be great, but I think we need boundaries around it. So I would simply encourage you to turn off your notifications. You decide if you really want to check Facebook or Instagram, you have to open the app yourself. Don't let a notification drag you in when you're trying to be present with your kids and you have to check that notification. I feel very strongly about that. And if anyone resonates, please drop in the chat. So I told you, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move fast. We gotta get to our meditation, I'm excited. Tips to make your workouts happen. Remember, it's not about the workout. It's about prioritizing yourself enough to create the time to take care of your body. Do you see the difference? It's not about, let me get a six pack. It's about, let me understand that self-care is what matters most. And I'm teaching myself to prioritize myself. 
I recommend, I think what time of day to work out is best is whatever time of day you actually do it. But I'm a big proponent of morning workouts. So whether you think that or not, I think it's wonderful to start the way with your day with moving your body. Some tips I have for you are to lay out your workout clothes the night before. You know, we have a business where we work out at home. We don't have to go to a gym. If you go to a gym, maybe, you know, you're gonna have to allocate a little more time. But for me, my, my gym is in my garage. So in the nighttime, I have my workout clothes down to my headband laid out in a pile because if I'm prepared, I feel ready to go. <clears throat> if you use supplements like a pre-workout, set that out on the counter, make your water, get ready for that. Okay. Have your alarm, which is probably our phones. Let's be honest, somewhere where you have to get up to turn it off. There's no rolling over and slamming the alarm clock. If you have to wake up 30 minutes earlier to get a workout in before work or before your children wake up. You need the accountability to literally get yourself out of bed. Okay. Put it in the bathroom. If you have your bedroom right next to your bathroom, put it on the sink. Yeah. And I know Tessa does that. Get up and walk over and turn it off. And that's going to already wake your body up a little bit more. Okay. And then you make it as easy as possible for us. We press play. So our gym again is our computer or our television. I have that space set up. So I'm not walking in feeling like, oh my gosh, now I have to get ready to work out, get your space ready. Get your clothes ready, get your mind ready. And my big thing, my team knows I love visualization. Write something down. If you have a goal, and maybe that goal is I want to be kinder to myself. I will take care of myself today. Write it down and put it on that bathroom mirror and understand that when you turn off that alarm clock, you see that reminder of, hey, you're worth 30 minutes. Go take care of yourself. Would that be a little more inspiring than saying I have to work out today? Heck yeah, it would. Take care of you. Okay. And then I just wanted to share my morning routine. So this is what I do Mondays through Fridays, pretty much all the time. I even make it happen if we're traveling like now. I wake up, I get ready, I do my workout. <clears throat> After my workout, I go back to my room and my husband and I kind of tag team our young children and I do an, a meditation. So I use the app Unplug and I'm gonna write that in the chat. Unplug meditation, it's just been working really well for me. Um, if you have Beachbody, I highly suggest the Unstress. It's a 21 day meditation program. And if you've never done meditation, it can sound a little maybe out of your comfort zone, but I'm telling you, it's just about getting quiet and listening to your breath and setting an intention for your day. So you take on the day, you don't let the day overtake you. I'm a firm believer in the first hour of your day sets the tone for the next 23. So I do my workout, I'm sweaty. I go and I sit down. I actually lay down and put my legs up the wall for like reverse blood flow circulation. I close my eyes. I listen to a meditation. Um, usually between five and 10 minutes are the guided meditations that I choose. After that, I get up, I sit up in my, this is in my closet. You guys are getting like the whole deal. This is literally what I do. I sit up in my closet. I'm done my meditation. I get out my phone and I do my gratitude list and my proof list. So my gratitude list is three things that I'm grateful for. And I have this running list of 2022 gratitude. So there's, there's a whole lot there. Right? I just had three things. It could be running water, that I have working limbs, that I have a husband that loves me, that I have a bed that's comfortable, like the smallest things. And then my proof list is I'm very goal oriented. So if I'm working on a business goal and I don't know how I'm going to get there, my second note is what's the proof that you're on your way? And maybe for you, it's, it's a health goal, right? Or maybe for you, it's a business goal as well. But our brains literally need to be trained that you might not know exactly how to figure this out, but you figured something out. So my proof list is, oh, well, I want to grow my team, right? So I have a great conversation going with this person today. And she asked me about this. And that's proving to my brain that you're on your way. And I believe you can do this for any goal in life. We literally need to take our brains to court and say, you're giving me this limiting belief that I can't do it, but look at what is happening. It might be the smallest move the needle, but you're moving the needle closer to that goal and permission to change your goals if it doesn't align with what you want, right? Okay, so that's what I do. And then I sit up and I'm done my gratitude and I'm done my proof. I brush my teeth, probably for the second time. Uh, I listen to, now this is a business guy. I've been listening to him for about six years now. I'm gonna type in the chat. His name is Darren Hardy. He wrote the book, The Compound Effect that I believe is the one of the books that Tessa said. And every morning at 8 a.m. I get a text message from him and it's completely free. And he does sometimes business tips, but also just life tips of how to be like a better human. And they're usually a couple minute videos. So it's totally free to subscribe. I've been listening to him for seven plus years. Of course he throws in, you know, he has workshops and stuff. I've never like done any of those, but I like his little tips. So I get ready. I listen to my Darren daily. If I get that done and I'm still getting ready in the morning, that's when I pull up audible and listen to the book that I'm reading. So I'm a huge fan of audible. I know some of you guys are more paper books. I listen or I wouldn't do it. 
right? So I listen to my book um, if I have time in the morning, but if not, I know I can get my 10 minutes in while I'm doing the dishes. I have my AirPod in, my husband's got the kids, I'm doing the dishes and listening to a chapter. And I know for our, if you're in our client groups, I'm asking you to read or listen to 10 minutes per day. Okay, and you might be like, where, where can I do that? Two things, do you do any household chores? Listen, put your ear pod in. Um, do you drive in a car? Turn that into your, your learning station, right? You're going to read something that really fuels your mindset, whether it's a devotional, a book, or a podcast. Your car time can be your learning time. That's something I learned at the very start of my journey and has never left me. If you're a physically read a book person, do it in the morning. Read five to 10 pages. Do it at night as long as you don't fall asleep. Okay. You will be amazed of what your life can do. If you are literally taking pieces of, of learning and growing every single day, like you can literally transform. And that's the most important transformation because that's internal transformation. So yes, I want you guys to read or listen to something and yes, you have the time. It's just allocating it. We all have the time. You have the same 24 hours a day as the busiest person in the world. It's just, what are we going to do with it? Okay. And then lastly, um, that's it. That's my routine. And so what I wrote down is it's so much more than a workout and good fuel for your body. Obviously meal prepping is something we do. If you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. If I don't have lunch and it's one o'clock and I'm starving, I'm going to go get something. Whereas I could have a lunch prepared and I would be eating that healthier option. I drink a superfood shake. That's a really easy meal for me every day. And I just eat very simply. My husband grills a lot. So we do a lot of grilled protein, steamed veggies, sweet potatoes. Um, we keep it very, very simple at our house. But again, it's really not, a, it's so much more than this workout or this good fuel. It's telling your body you love and appreciate it by taking care of it all. And if you're not a client of ours, that's why we run our accountability groups, our client groups. We have the tools, we know how to help. And I think that's really what it's all about. It starts with the physical goals. You stay because you fall in love with the community and you fall in love with most importantly with your own personal transformation. Those are my tips. I hope you got something. Don't feel like you have to change everything in your life, but maybe one little nugget um, is something you could take away. And I know I went fast. So if you have any questions, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. I'll type that in. Um, please let me know after, reach out to me and I'm happy to give you any tips of what I talked about. Okay, let's take a collective breath in, take a big breath in, sit up nice and tall and a big breath out. I am so excited to introduce my energy coach, Cheyenne Hawks, who I have been working with for about two months now and have just, she has really helped me on the journey back to myself. And I've really experienced such a massive transformation in a short period of time. She is gracious enough to lead us to close out this workshop with a 10 minute guided meditation. So Cheyenne, I'm going to turn the time over to you. Let's welcome her in the chat. Good morning. Um, I am so excited to be here with you. Um, what an honor to meet you and read your comments and the things you're sharing. Uh, I, Ashley, thank you so much for um, sharing this time with me. When Ashley and I first start, started talking about the idea of this wellness workshop, our intention was to give you tools to help you connect to your heart. Because like she said, you guys are Beachbody. Most of you are already in, in the group with Beachbody. You have a ton of tools at your fingertips that you've been using for a long time. You know how to get your workouts in. You know how to do your meal planning. But what we want to give you is tools to connect to your heart. Because that's going to make the difference on how you feel about yourself. Not the scale, not your relationships, not your job, not your house, but your heart. And so today I'm going to be giving you a couple of tools and uh, Ashley and I have the intention to continually share with you the tools that work for us and keep looking for more powerful tools for you and share these with you because we think that's what's going to make the world better is people who are connected to their hearts and out there sharing with others. Um, to start most workshops that I do, I use, can everyone see this um, little box? It's a deck. I'll put it in the chat, um, but they're just these simple cards that I can shuffle through and pick for inspiration. And I wanna tell you the card that I picked for today because I think it's kind of fun. The title is simple. And what it says is how can I make the simple practices of my life sacred? Meaning the day-to-day -day stuff we do, how can we make that a little bit more intentional so that it's sacred? 
In what ways have I overlooked the beauty in my day-to-day -day routines? Where in my life is there a call to simplify? I allow myself to rest in the simple and take in the beauty of what I have labeled mundane. This is a really beautiful offering and I'm gonna share this in the quote. I have these cards because I'm human. Even though I'm a spiritual wellness coach and I coach and I'm staying high in this field of trying to help people be connected to their hearts, I need inspiration too, right? This little deck of cards sits on my desk and I tell you at least three days a week, I'm shuffling trying to find what, what do I do from here? Okay, so we're gonna get ready to get into a meditation. I want you to um, just take a, a moment to notice how you feel before meditation. And if you, if you don't mind journaling in your journal, just how are you feeling right now? Just jot down a few words. And I want you to find a comfortable seat and give yourself permission to disconnect and take a moment of peace. And this is really important. I think the giving ourselves permission of I'm going to give myself this time that's just for me helps us to really drop into a meditation and be present with it. So let's take a couple deep breaths together. So inhale again, exhale slowly. I want you to gently close your eyes and you can either have your palms facing up or maybe on your heart. Take a moment to settle into your body. As you rest in this peaceful state, let your mind drift as you listen to my words. Take a moment to think of three clear intentions that you want for your future life. Take another beautiful inhale through the nose and slow exhale out of the mouth. Be clear on these three intentions as we move throughout this meditation and your mind starts to drift off. Focus on the air and the flow of your breath. Let the flow of your breath rise and fall. Noticing any tension in your body and allowing that to melt away. As we start to go deeper into this meditation, focus on your breathing. We're going to take a moment to visualize a beautiful bright light in between your eyebrows. Your mind's eye. Allow this beautiful, bright, warm light to expand out, allowing it to grow bigger. Visualize it filling up the room. This beautiful, warm, bright light streaming out of your third eye. Take a moment now to think of those three intentions. Allow them to come in and immerse and lay down into your subconscious mind. Just explore this feeling. Explore these intentions as they start to become clear for you. Notice what you're experiencing. Allow these intentions to come through this beautiful bright light. Let them embed into your mind to help you manifest these goals into the future, your mind has to arrive there first. Allow them to settle deep into your subconscious so you are clear in the direction of where you're going. Take a moment now to visualize the feeling of these goals being manifested in your life. Allow yourself to sit in the space, this immense gratitude, these incredible goals are unfolding for you. Exploring this future, what sensations are coming up? Is your skin tingling as you feel this warm, bright light? 
When you bask in the glory of achieving your goals, allow this beautiful bright light to gently start to come towards the body. And as this warm bright light is coming back into your third eye, remind yourself that you're empowered to achieve anything in this life. The beautiful bright light is getting smaller and smaller and now closing over. Just be reassured that these intentions are within you. Take a moment now to take a deep breath and slowly exhale out of your mouth. Feel your feet on the floor, wiggle your toes with a gentle smile whenever you are ready. Please open your eyes. Thank you for sharing this experience with me and allowing me to guide you in a meditation. Take a moment to notice how you feel. See if you notice a difference. Write down how you feel. Write down those three intentions that you held in your mind and know that you have everything you need to make that a reality. And you have people on this call believing in you and supporting you and willing to help you reach whatever that is that came up for you. This piece is always available to you. This piece we get to fill right now, it's always available. You just have to take the time and make it a priority. And I share this with you from my heart to yours. Thank you so much. Diane, thank you so much. I feel like my voice just dropped an octave because I was so into that. How do you guys, can we give some thanks to Cheyenne? Awesome. I felt, I feel like I could really visualize the light. I'm sitting next to this open window. And when you talked, the sun started to come out. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, love that. Oh my gosh. We're going to close. <clears throat> But first I would love Cheyenne, if you want to drop in the chat, how, um, the name of your business and how people can get a hold of you, that would be awesome. And Cheyenne, before I close this out, is there anything else you wanted to add? Um, Ashley and I are so excited to keep offering these to you. Um, we are going to be brainstorming on what we think is going to be the most valuable to you for each upcoming one. We're open to suggestions. If there's something you want us to teach you, we got it. We got you, we have the resources, we have the connections, we will bring guests on to help you. Um, I know that the work we're talking about, this heart work, it's a little scary, but I can tell you that it is the most transformative thing you can do. And whatever you put into it, you're gonna get back tenfold, tenfold. And so I, everyone on here is brave and strong and beautiful and I believe in you. And I'm so honored that this is how I got to start my day, truly. Truly. Appreciate That's it. it. <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much. And okay, awesome. And yeah, drop your information in the chat so that everyone can um can learn more about your business, Heart of Wellness. All right, you guys, I'm gonna take one minute of your time to close out. And I just first off wanted to announce our next wellness workshop. Our vision is to offer these um, monthly. So our next one will be Saturday, September 3rd. And yes, it's Labor Day weekend. And if you're traveling, how awesome to start a vacation weekend with wellness like we did this morning. Um, so just make sure that you're, you're tapped into who invited you to this Zoom so we can keep you posted on upcoming ones. And I just wanted to end with, um, with a request. If you are not currently a client of ours or coaching with us and you have something changed, maybe something shifted over the last 60 minutes and you want support and you know that this community can offer support whether you just want support on getting back on track with health and wellness, which is amazing, or you see something in what we do as coaches that you not only want to do that, you also want to pay it forward and help other people. This is your call to action. Reach out to the person who invited you to this Zoom call to have a conversation. Our intention is to help you take care of you. And I know for me, when I made my business, my wellness, I prioritized it more and more every single day. So guys, let's, let's go ahead and close out with, um, with a deep inhale. So wherever you are, roll the shoulders one more time. 
and take your hands if you can and bring them together. Just create some energy and space in your hands. And I really want you to focus on your, it's like you're starting a fire. Okay, stoke that fire, stoke that fire and now shake it out and send it out. Send it out. And bring your hands now to your heart. And let's take a collective breath in. And a breath out. Thank you guys so much for being here.